Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whoever you are, wherever you are. Welcome to Third Culture Convos. Uh, one of the things I was struck by yesterday was, and we were just talking about this right now, is that, like, when I, when I think about about like third culture kids and people that feel like they're from everywhere and nowhere at the same time, and the fact that they kind of exist all over the world and they have all these different backgrounds. And even though, you know, we talk about maybe a Middle Eastern perspective or a Pakistani perspective or a Southeast Asian perspective or whatever, um, uh, what we find is that we can relate to each other and we can relate to a lot of people in a lot of different places um, that have a similar sort of experience of being from no everywhere and nowhere at the same time. And uh, so I think about how, why, like, sort of what, what are sort of some of the characteristics that, like, obviously, like, of being, of feeling like lost, but what are some of the characteristics? What are some of the pros and cons? What are some of the advantages and disadvantages? Because if I was a young guy, I, I wish someone had told me that, you know what, Wasim, like it's okay that you you don't feel like you fit in everywhere, but you can adapt to almost any any group. You can fit in absolutely everywhere, even though you don't feel like you fit in anywhere, which is like a crazy dichotomy to have at the same time. And I was thinking about that in light of uh, Joe Coy, and you know, Joe Coy has a, a a huge, massive like audience, right? Like he like sells out theaters left, right, and center, and he'll have a wide diversity of people like you know listening to his jokes and being able to relate to 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 kind of like you know get in on it. Um, and I think he's a he's sort of a classical example of a third culture kid, uh, of a person that like uses his that ability uh, and 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 pulls from it in order to like you know hone his craft and to and to entertain and to do the thing and so i was just thinking like you know if i if i was a young dude in and a third young third culture person in brazil uh, and i was listening to us i would go okay what's what's uh, what's uh, like what's in it for me what's my, what are my pros and what are my cons what do i need to like what do i need to check against and what do i what do I need to double down on? And then, Maja, you were talking about a Wikipedia article. <laughs> so on Wikipedia, this is all, I'm just reading off the phone. Third culture individuals are particularly adept at building relationships with other cultures while not possessing a cultural identity of their own. <laughs> they can also be referred to as cultural hybrids, cultural chameleons, and global nomads. Skipping down a little bit, there are benefits and challenges to being a TCK according to various researchers on the subject. Uh, the term TCKs may be applied to all social classes and includes immigrant and refugee students. So the first benefit that's written here is expanded worldview. TCKs have an understanding that there's more than one way to look at situations that they're exposed to or experience. This can also be a challenge, however, when TCKs return to a culture that is homogenous in their belief system, as an expanded worldview is perceived as offensive or useless. Please discuss. Uh, an expanded God. worldview is here's, useless. Here's, here's the box and pick it apart. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks for that. Um, one thing that came to mind automatically when you're when at the beginning of it when it was saying something about um almost like a chameleon like quality um i guess is that when we start saying to people oh, you're so whitewashed um you know you're brown but you're white like what's going on here type of thing you're, you're always with the white boys um no man i think what it means with chameleon what chameleon means is that like you can change the color of your skin uh, based on the surroundings. So if I'm hanging out with like with the Jamaicans, I can uh, you know I can like all right let's 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 talk with the Jamaicans. Let's like, like we're yeah. hanging out with the Jamaicans. If I'm hanging out with the uh, with the with the white dudes, I can like I can I can switch. I'm like all right okay yeah. Like, so basically you know I, let's I basically said two different things in one sentence. So you have the chameleon aspect that you're talking about, but then you have the other aspect when you how many times have you met someone and you and you're like let's say for example, the dude doesn't, person doesn't speak any Arabic or Farsi or whatever language that their family speaks. And, and, you know, they, they love hockey 
Like they, they do all like the perceived white things in Canada type of thing. You drink Canadian, you know, crappy beer and stuff like that. Um, I mean, typically speaking, we, we would say of that person, you know, you're, you're totally white, dude. Like what's going on? Like, do you have any sense of, of your culture? And, and sometimes people divert from the culture because they're like, well, it doesn't mean anything to me or it's rebellion or whatever it is. Um, I don't think that's necessarily healthy. I prefer the chameleon uh, ability personally. Um, I think I mean, it's more, I can relate to you guys, whoever, whatever group you are, I can relate to you. I understand uh, your traditions and why you have those traditions, but you mm-hmm. cannot necessarily relate to me, my other mm-hmm. half. So like, I'm down with the like hockey and this and that, like I'm down. Uh, but I don't think you would be down for Friday prayers. I'm barely down. So like, I don't necessarily <laughs> think you would be down. I remember down the last or... time I went to Friday. Well, I mean, I look, no look, man. Yeah, I think I think Friday prayer is the worst game. example. Like what, what, what if it was like Galab Juman, like, or like, a, like it, it was dessert. Like dessert, I'm down for dessert. But I don't give a shit whose dessert it is. Like I, I want some dessert. <laughs> like, right, like you pick an obligation, like you pick prayer, right? Pick something else. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're making like like I, I, i'm not down for like like hard labor <laughs> like, like yeah no there's too take, much exercise take, take, involved i don't go take to the food gym. take food the easiest thing universal global thing i'm okay with eating burgers but you lot are not necessarily okay eating, eating masalas biryani. and karais biryani <laughs> that's only because if it's too spicy it's going to ruin my stomach and i'm going to be on the toilet for 10 hours I love the way whatever, it tastes. Whatever, whatever the reason <laughs> is, I can relate to you. You guys find it hard to relate to me. I think that's what it is with the chameleon thing. Yeah. That like I can fit into your world, you can't necessarily fit into mine. Well, I mean, if you want to take basic, simple examples that you can, you can, like cultural differences, for example. So like, it's really tough to explain certain things about, um, like, re- elements of respect, for example, that is different in like. The eastern world than it is in the western world type of thing and you have to like explain to your friends who are not from the east to be like well why do you why do you do these certain things like i, I find think- it to be i find it to be rude sometimes when you walk into someone's home and you don't go to your host directly and and say hi type of thing like you know yeah. and, and thanks thanks for letting me come into your house man <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of times i see people do that and they're you know from non-cultures out we're talking about there's not even a concept of that the um, um one of the things myself, i think is haven't cool. explained that a few times to people it's like it, oh, the, 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 the um this. touching feet like touching feet is like it's something that i'm not like i'm not familiar with like in my I background but feet. i hate feet stay away from feet <laughs> well, but no but that like that would be like totally like like in a hindu household you go in and you don't touch like you know the auntie's feet you're like like you, you are rude like who raised you Right. Like, like how, who raised you not to do that? Right. Like, and you got to You got to do that. Um, but that's an example of it, too. Right. Like where like where you're like, no, no, man, no, no, I don't I don't I don't want to touch no feet. But like it would be like that would be rude. <laughs> it's like to not I don't do want to so. touch my own damn feet sometimes. God, no, thanks. Mm-mm, I hate feet. So when it comes to introductions, I'm very confused uh, every day over here because uh, I'm used to dealing with Arabs and they have a very formal way of hi, hello, salam alaikum, yani. They'll do mm-hmm. the cheek thing or the mm-hmm. hushmuk, like the nose thing. There'll be a lot of like Italian Then it gets confusing style. and end up making up by accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like <laughs> some guys, some, some, some Arabs, you have to do the cheek. Some Arabs do the nose. What if there's like a miscommunication and you end up like bumping it? Some don't but do both cheeks. Some do the one cheek. I'm, and then yeah there's the one two three there's the number count which is different it's one two or one two three or one two and then one Um, there's the number count and then the left right left right like i don't know know what in the end just go get a freaking room like what (laughs) uh so i'm used to uh salam alaikums with arabs which is very of like five minute formal like everybody stands up just to sit Mm. back down and that's it like hi hello is literally a five minute affair in Pakistan, there's two sets of communities. There's uh, the very formal people who are often more traditional, I've noticed. Um, they do the hi, hello, and they're hugging, and there's a whole like thing. And then there's the like modernized people who they just sort of sit down. They don't even like shake hands or anything. I and find that to me, be super rude. 
thank call you. me old school I, but i think it's really rude see, no i that's what i like this is a like you know, it really grinds my gears. And I've mm. said this to a couple of p- locals here that, yo, like I'm raised very different. Uh, when you walk into Shisha, even if you see your like enemy, you go and make a show of hi, hello. That's just how like I was raised in that environment and I'm down with it. Cool. I imagine the situation of going into Shisha, my enemy is over there. And then we sit and we smoke and we see who can make the bigger rings. <laughs> like, <laughs> like everything's a competition. Like, <laughs> you know, the, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Everybody's watching Mac and Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Who's who's making those rings, man? You, you see those rings, man? Man, he just uh, made a ring, crazy ring. Like, 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 bro, he just made a castle ring. What's going on? <laughs> Up your game. So yeah, um, hi, hellos, and culture. And I don't know. It gets. Uh, I find it very rude, especially like I don't know. I like we were ready, like. This has been since beginning. You see somebody, you go, you make a five minute thing and sit back down. It's not even like you're going to talk to them about anything. It's yeah. literally salam alaikum, alaikum asalam, but there's a whole bunch of like steps in the middle. And I like that. I, it feels like community. It feels like society. It feels uh, friendly and nice. It's like that's why we go to the shisha places or whatever, right? To see each other and like mm-hmm. gossip about each other. Well, <laughs> I, much. like one of the things that I talk about that I, I find that I'm immediately beginning to, I like I find relation with people is when they're like bilingual is when they have another language. Like so like one of the things I'm, I'm trying to do is to is to instill like bilinguality in my children. Right. And and so I'll meet people that like are, are bilingual as well, but are totally different other language. Right. So like maybe they're like a, like English Spanish or English Hebrew or English uh, whatever. Um, and they have similar, like it depends, like, you know, immediately I can like, we can build bridges and discuss uh, like, and have like, you know, a nice 20 minute conversation, 30 minute conversation about what we're doing, what we talk at home, how do we instill it? Do we travel? Like, do we try to take them into things? Do we do classes? Do we do this? And so immediately there's a, there's like a, a relation that begins to exist between uh, uh, the shared um, sort of uh, struggle or, or the shared uh, hope of having bilingual children that can speak like sort of both of your mother tongues or both of the languages in the family and feel comfortable in both of those. Um, even though maybe I kind of think, you know, I'm like, you know, hoping that your kids are comfortable um, when they're like in this spot or that spot. I mean, it also might be futile, but uh, just based on what I'm, we were just talking about, right? Because culturally you're you're like the, the whole thing about the third culture kid is that you don't like you, you, you you're everywhere and nowhere right like you feel at home everywhere and you also feel like you're not at home any, at anywhere and so you're you're kind of like doomed to being uncomfortable <laughs> which I, I know that like but you know that's what we're talking about like the pros and the cons right like it's it's two sides of the same coin um that the bilinguality linguality that you that also i just want to segue back to what uh, one of the benefits i was written here was the expanded world view i think when you are bilingual or you have picked up another language you automatically you have an expanded world view inherently because you're speaking another language another culture you've taken a bit of that so you already so i think there's a little bit of that i particularly want to talk about this part where uh, they wrote When TCKs return to a culture that is homogenous in their belief system um, as an expanded worldview is perceived as offensive or useless. I personally felt that about uh, the United States. I think my, I have a much more expanded worldview than the general person there, even the general educated person there. And I think they panicked often and they found it either offensive or useless because I would say stuff that for me is very normal uh, healthcare should be paid for by the government this is a canadian part in me that's like obvious this is i don't even i'm saying this this isn't uh, a political debate we're going to have in college this is like i believe this and so that becomes offensive or if you talk about pakistan or anything uh, in asia that's just useless because we are better than that yeah, yeah. like well, what do we have to learn from them <laughs> 
Yes. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. They, you know, when you're the top of the pile, right? Like the, the the sort of the U.S. has been the like the you know the reserve currency of the of the last like 50, 60, like of, of the last while, you know. Um, and so when you're top of the pile, it's. I think it's natural for you to think like, what can I learn from all the riffraff? Like we're really like the riffraff should be learning from me, right? Like they should be like trying to, and then that's the idea of like, you know, when Americans travel like that, that the stereotype of Americans traveling, right? Like they go in, they look for McDonald's, like wherever, where they go, they're like, where's the McDonald's at? Um, and like that. Or the Brits trying to find an yeah. English breakfast. Or those, the videos. Yeah. Or the videos <laughs> or the videos where like, you know, you'll ask an American, right? Like, where's like, like like where's uh like nepal oh no you, you don't have to give like you where's india and they're like show me india on a map and there's so much of that stuff and a part of me wants to go like no man this is just a stereotype and they're trying to up, i've heard a it. rumor america's I've, already I've heard like a that rumor. so you know what you know when like jimmy kimmel or whoever it is like those late shows and they have the they're asking people on the street questions and they're the dumbest answers are given to most obvious questions yeah apparently those are paid actors i damn and it's like no way they can't no be that way. stupid they, they, they they ask him like they, they literally ask him like what's the name of the street you're standing on and they're like uh, uh like uh, i don't know i've had questions that astounded me my barber i was going to visit canada and i told him like yo shave me up i'm going to canada and he asked me what state is that in so that I'm, I'm not surprised about that though yeah, but like, sure. Listen, when I was living, when, listen, listen, when I was living in I, England, like, why listen, is... MJ, when I was doing it, when I did my one year of university in Manchester, I met people from England who honestly thought that Canada was a part of the United States. And we're talking about the English here. So I'm not surprised that someone in Pakistan would ask you that question as well. No, this was in America. This on oh, the US. This is oh, the difference. Talking, oh. Pakistanis are much more attuned to the world than Americans. The average, like on the street Pakistani, they single me out and they can, they 50% mm. of them say you're from Dubai. Like they know exactly my style, like the beard yeah, and yeah. everything. They literally, that would never happen in America. No one in America can right. point out and say you've lived in Dubai. Pakistanis are far oh. more uh far more worldly connected globally okay. connected okay. in my opinion than america well this now that was you say, my barber in america who asked now, me uh, like i'm going up to canada and he's yeah. like oh uh is that which state is that in or is that in state or out of state and i was like man yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't like well now that you mentioned that I, i'm not i'm even more not surprised because you understand a lot of my flights for example that i have people coming back coming from the united states they think that they don't have to go through customs when they're coming to canada like I literally had this conversation with someone on a flight back from Cincinnati many, many moons ago. Okay. And I'm, I'm handing out at the time, the customs cards, I'm handing them out. And this one dude looks up at me and says, I don't need that. And I said, why? He said, cause I'm American. And I said, but you're going into Canada. The, the customs, I'll cut them some slack. Just oh, man, I'll, I'll cut it, them lots of slack, man. That doesn't mean like, it, it <laughs> might've been lots. different. So? No, no, Yanni, it might've been different before 9-11 because at some point, America and Canada, you didn't even need a passport to yeah, travel. Yeah, you could just like so walk like, through, right? I'll, like... <laughs> I'll cut him some slack for no, no, the customs dude, and rules. This dude was like, at, this was like seven years ago, and this guy was in his 20s. He wasn't traveling before 9 11. Fair, fair. I don't like, know. There's yeah, no way. Like, there's no um, way. But well, he I'm was sure going he... to Canada, man. They look like, 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 what? It's not like, um, like I sometimes I think Canada like throws it throws the French in just to throw the Americans off. <laughs> like just be like we need Quebec just to like mess with America so that they don't think that we're in a, we're another state. <laughs> um, Bottom line, um, Americans are not as worldly as like they think they are. That's all, that's all I'm gonna say. Overall, overall, they like to control the world, which they're not doing so much anymore. But they don't know much about the world. What? Sorry, America. The truth they don't know and this like scary slash sad part is they really don't want to know there's mm -hmm. no curiosity there's no uh, i can't fault them for that though do you have to is that a requirement i don't think so we're talking about a lot of people who really they live their lives very insular like and it just and a lot of them don't leave their counties and that's perfectly fine 
and that's where we get to that expanded world. However, view. like I, that's I would exactly be exactly where we have that. I'm, I'm a like that would hurt. Like if you you move to a town and like nobody wants to know about anything, and you're diff like you're a different like anything outside of their town, and then you're from outside the town, and it's very easy then for you to go, oh, you don't want to know anything about me either. Wow, I don't really feel welcome here. I don't really feel like like loved. Mm. This was like one of the things that that I, I had an anthropology professor years ago that said whenever she she went down to like Latin America, she did a lot of her work in like Colombia and stuff, and she would go spend like six seven months there and then come back to Canada, and then she would go there and she would love it and like everybody would love her and she would feel so loved and like everybody was so warm and welcoming and like oh you're gonna sit down where you from oh my goodness I can't where you're from oh my god da, 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 all that type of stuff and then she would go back to Canada and she would feel depressed she said I would feel so depressed because there wasn't that like natural warmth where everybody's like like it's just not there it's not like it's not part of the 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 culture for them to come come over let me give you a hug let me sit down let's have dinner let's have like this I can't go oh, like uh, like all of that like warmth is like I'd be depressed for like a few months until I you know like, you until know, I adjusted to the to the culture that you bring up Colombia uh, because I I do travel there often enough and um I like going there because yeah there's a warmth there and and at first they they're not used to having travelers from Canada going to Colombia it's it's they're used to having other Latin American uh people from other parts of Latin America or South America whatever going to Colombia because for a lot of them it's it's a cheaper destination uh for vacation and stuff like that um but when they like they they're like wait a second. for me people say that I can physically speaking can make sense so a lot of people think I'm Colombian then they speak to me in Spanish and I'm like I don't really speak Spanish but then what I find is that they're even they're like oh you're from Canada they're like they're even some can be a bit, oh, what the hell are you doing here? And others are a bit more open and, and more curious. And then I find that they get even more open and curious and warm when you start to like actually attempt to speak Spanish. And they don't care that it's horrible. Like they'll just, they'll, they'll, you, you can see a difference in them actually appreciating the fact that you're trying to make that effort, no matter how many few words that you know type of thing. And those, those have been my experiences in Colombia. I've also had experiences on the beach where someone's trying to sell me cocaine and shove me in the chest, but whatever. I mean, if that happens, I just call the police and they take them away. But you know, like buy the, the, buy the cocaine, the man. What the <laughs> not cocaine. So not Purch cocaine. Purchase the um, coke. <laughs> but uh, that's one thing though, especially on the beaches, the, the police that police the beaches, um, they don't want the tourists to be messed with. So if you can get their attention at the appropriate time, you're, you'll be okay. Safety <laughs> tips. <just> say. <laughs> okay. okay. We're going to stop that. We're going to pause the safety tips. <laughs> as yeah. Travel and get back to our regular schedule programming. As a sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Medellin is one of the like, modern miracles of like city like it's turned itself around quite drastically they're an inspiration honestly i, I don't want to make i, I just said the word i just said the word colombia and now look what this conversation went through right <laughs> like, like 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 oh like shakira shakira like what, what else do you guys want as soon as i said the word rashid <laughs> was like clear until he mentioned the coke in the beach and i was like man like don't play into the stereotype <laughs> like, what are we talking about like like, like Talk about any like yeah yeah um so I do want to get to the challenges by the way in this article because some of the challenges for TCKs are quite interesting and we see this one immediate like we see this quite often uh confused loyalties third culture kids can experience a lot of confusion with politics and values this is especially the case when moving from collectivist to individualist cultures or vice versa as the values within each culture are different from the other. This is, issue is also related with the identity crisis on a cultural level, not being able to feel a sense of oneness with any one nationality or culture. Oftentimes, TCKs cannot answer the question, where is home? So confused loyalties is the first challenge. What do you guys think? Like agreed. No, no, I obviously agree, but like it's 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 like I, I think about like what's the strength and the weakness there? Like what's so like the you know, like 
it i think i think that's a, that's great that you have confused loyalties because that way that way you can choose like you can uh it, it's harder to be tribal like and like the the problem with like tribalism as a like a political ideology is that you know you you just jump with the group that you're in so everybody i like like i'm i'm my family is like uh conservative and therefore i'm conservative and like my political party is conservative and therefore i'm conservative and everything they say i say and that's that and i think that's a great like when you have a confused loyalties like by definition or like by like as a common characteristic of confused loyalty, then it's a lot harder to be, to like, it's easier to be even more confused because there's a pressure to be just part of the group and like to just, but then you would actually have a tendency to like not, to be like, no, well, no, you know what? I'm, I'm actually nuanced. <laughs> I'm gonna have nuanced opinions. Well, like pick a topic. I may be conservative on them. I may be progressive on them. I may be, you just gotta pick the topic and then I'll, I'll, I'll come to my, to come, come, come to conclusions or think about stuff. So I think there's a pro and a con in those confused loyalties. Um, uh, uh, I, what was the con? Um, I will say that I get super confused when I see someone of color really conservative in terms of like getting involved in the conservative party <laughs> because I can understand the economic aspect of it. Um, like being fiscally conservative <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. I get that part. But I don't know how much a colored person can really fit into the overall conservative party considering it's quite white. And there's a lot of racist elements. I don't know how they can fit into that. Well, that's what I'm what I'm still saying. I'm saying it, it's nuanced, like that, 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 like. I know, I know, I know, but like that. Those are brushstrokes, broad brushstrokes. You know, like, like I mean, we've been making them. Like we've been making broad brushstrokes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to raise uh, your hand, man. Just talk. <laughs> <laughs> you sw we switched vocabulary at some point. I just want to be clear about this because I had read about third culture kids who can also be white. There's nothing like third culture kids has no boundary no, no, I know, or whatever. I know. And you had mentioned people of color in the Republican mm -hmm. or conservative party. So there was at some point a switch over there. Um, I do, uh, I get what you're saying, but those people are in denial or hate themselves. Like there's, that's a psychological case. Uh, like those people you're talking about. There's you think a lot so of, though? Because uh, I, I, I don't know, because so like if someone is physically, stuff but if someone that. is like super, if someone doesn't, let's say if we're going to keep it within Canada, if a per, I mean, okay, obviously, typically speaking, historically, immigrant communities for the most part vote for the liberals just because they're perceived to be the party of, of immigrant communities and, and all that kind of stuff. And the conservative have not, but I can't imagine someone who is like really against like, just because someone comes from like an immigrant community doesn't necessarily mean they're going to want to be a part of the liberal party, even though they might have some of the morals that they agree with, with the liberal party. But I know a lot of people that they're like, I can't agree with their, with their economics. I just can't be a part of that. They feel, especially, and the NDP as well. They're like, I just can't agree with that. It's too irresponsible for me. So then, I don't think that they're that they hate themselves or whatever it is. I just think that there are certain aspects that attract that would attract them to a more economic platform in terms of their political leanings. And then I guess they overlook the other stuff. And once you take money over the other stuff, there's like a deeper root issue, because if mm -hmm. you're picking money over human beings you've literally lost your humanity and there's a deeper psychological issue that's at work here this would like the money part is just the end result kind of thing there's like a lot has gone wrong before that this is just like you've made it clear now that's that's my no, opinion no no that's, no 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 I, I i disagree i disagree here's what here's where i'm disagreeing not because like i disagree because all right I, I, this is my argument for nuance, right? So you can be conservative and not be like racist. We agree? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. 100%. You can you can be conservative yeah. fiscally, but you can but you could be progressive uh, socially. Agree or not yes. agree? You can. So you can be 
uh, like, you know, I could be conservative when it comes to like human rights <laughs> and I could be liberal when it comes to some other like topic. And so they, by my, I, my, what I'm saying is that will attract and ultimately then when it, unfor, I mean, un, like a failure of, of uh, political systems where you have to like pick the group and that's it. And like, there's no, like, the, you know, there's no voice in the middle. There's no voice that like, you know, that like, cause you end up, what, what happens with the person is that they end up prioritizing the issues to, for them. And so you prioritize like your economics, right? You prioritize economics because I need, I need a, either tax cuts or I need, I need you guys to cut down out on tariffs or I need you to, I need A, B or C. And so I prioritize that high and then I pick that group. And so, but that doesn't make me a, like, because I like, because I voted conservative because I voted a vote for a conservative that doesn't make the, like, you know, that doesn't make me a wholesale conservative, right? It makes me a person that voted conservative in that one time. Like it's like one of my problems with the political system, especially with like primaries and like the beginning, is that like only registered like group. Like if, if I'm in the conservative party and I'm registered, then I can vote for the conservative party leader. Um, uh, but if I'm outside of it, I can't. But then, but but that's like that totally alienates like a a group of people like that. I think should. Like, you know, I do care about who's running, even, even if I'm liberal, I do care about who's running in the conservative thing because I, I want someone that is bringing a di like the different parts of the things that are not being represented in my in my liberal caucus, let's just say. Um, do you know what I mean? Well, you can always become a member of each political party and vote in all those different primaries. Can you? I think so. Man, isn't that like a full-time job then? Like, like, I feel like that'd be a big job. No, can you actually? No, you can't. I think I'd have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure. Like, it's you become no... a card carrying member of a political party, and then you, you just get collect the cards. Type... <laughs> you have to register. You you probably have to pay. What I mean, a classical third culture money. move, right? Like, yeah. like, look, I got all of the, like cards, the cards, man. Like, well, how many passports do you want? I got all these. I got all the the colors of the rainbow, baby. Like, that's what you got to do. You got to collect. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I agree. I agree with everything you said, Wasim. I'm not uh, like, I don't know how we jump to this, uh, like, punk Canadian politics, but like, I do agree. You can, uh, in fact, the only two labels I subscribe to, me personally, I'm a millennial and I'm independent. These are the only two labels I feel after thinking about it and whittling it down. I'm an independent, which means I have. I'm down with the politics discussion and all, but like, I'm gonna do like, and this is sort of the confused loyalties. I've decided my loyalty is to me and my ideas. My brain and my gut will lead me far more than any of this group think and party politics and all of this, like literally, and your little almost monologue there, it, it was perfect because the sentence reads, Third culture kids can experience a lot of confusion with politics and values. And both, both of those things were things you had talked about that it's really confusing because I could have certain values and they might not reflect in the political system. So I have to bend my values a little bit for the political system because the political system is not bending to my values. Um, that's yeah. the way it's working these well, days. Well, yeah, right? and, and so, so the confusion is actually a positive thing. Like, like, so the, the confusion is actually a useful fodder, right? So that you can grow out of it. Uh, because without the confusion, you are, you are just in the group, right? Like without the like, oh shit, reality check, let's say, because wait, wait, man, you know, like, how can I be this and this at the same time? How? <laughs> like, the, 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 <laughs> And that's, by the way, just in terms of those labels that you were mentioning, like when people say I'm a hundred percent capitalist, like Americans love their labels these days. I'm constitutionalist. I'm a capitalist. Why can't you be like, I personally love and hate capitalism. It's very useful. It's what got me these like fashion hats or fashion shoes or beard oils. Um, like the fact that there's a free market and anyone can make a good and if they can sell it and someone's ready to buy it, that's amazing. But can we also agree that there's a level to it? Like, can there be a percentage that I'm like 50% capitalist, but I'm also not 50%, like I'm not down with some of this stuff. Like, can we be a little bit of this, a little bit of that, come see, come sa? Can I be socialist in my like social policies? 
and conservative in my financial fiscal there's no, policies. There's no room for this mismatch. nuance in public discourse. Like, right, like that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Or even, even I would argue, like, uh, if you just look at in a very general modern America term, what for me it's personally it would be logical for an american to say i want the government to pay for hospital bills for americans and i want the american government to build border walls to secure the borders and keep immigrants out for me those two actually the media has made them mutually exclusive of each other if you uh want pro public health care then you also will want borders open borders, right? The bleeding heart liberal style. And if you are a Republican, you want big walls and you want private health care because that's the efficient capitalist thing. But why can't, wouldn't an American who cares about their people, wouldn't they want the mix of them? Wouldn't they want public health care to be saving their American people and big walls to be quote unquote protecting them? The mishmash, the Man, hybrid you're, theory? You're gonna break the people. Right, so you're going to break. I'm broken Russian. The way it looks like it, I think I'm broken Russian. Oh, because you're confused. Mishmash. Mishmash. You're going to break them. You're going to break people. Well, and there's no. This is actually my like my where where I I kind of dilute this like to to this this problem is and and I tie it to the issue that I was having the last couple of weeks, uh, which is like it's it, I find it much harder to have conversations today than I did like last year or the year before, especially with things like politics. And because there's so many topics that have become touchy that you can't touch shit, right? Like you can't, like, you can't just play with something. You can't do this. You can't, you, you can't play with ideas. You can't play with, like, you can't, ex almost can't express yourself because as soon as you do, you're, you're like, you're kicked off the, you're, you're kicked off the, the thing. I mean, I, I, it shocks me. It's, I, I, I'm constantly shocked at, because I'll, you know, I'll drop a, like an influencer or I'll drop a, a name or I'll drop someone uh, that, that, like, you know, that I'm, 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 I'm uh, affected by. And then like you, you, you immediately get put like whatever that person knows superficially about that person or whatever, like I, if that person was canceled or whatever, then you're like in that bucket and you really feel like you're going to lose friendships of this shit. Right. And so it becomes, it makes it easier for you to go, you know what? I'm just not going to, I'm I, I'm no longer going to be edgy. I'm not going to like go up to a line and have a conversation. I'm going to like, unless I know this person's going to agree with me, <laughs> um, I'm not going to do it. Uh, because, uh, well, and that's probably also part of that third culture thing where like, you know, I'm anti, uh, like, uh, well, maybe that's me. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm low on the confrontation. I don't like, I don't, I don't listen. Like I kind of enjoy a debate, but I don't want to lose anybody or over it. Um, uh, and so, and now I can't, like, I can't even enjoy the debate. Right. Because I might, I'm, I, I may lose people over it. Right. Like, um, and I just noticed that, that there's so many more topics that you can't touch. I'll go Such and MC Hammer. Uh, I mean, you picked them. Like, picked it. Like, <laughs> I can't. I can't touch them. Like, uh, literally, they're too hot. You can't, can't, you can't ever bring them up. I can't. Like, I mean, you talk like, like, like. I mean, yeah. There's a bunch. A bunch of. We've already talked about them. We get the warnings on top mm. of our fucking like podcast because of the things that you say. You pick like anything where a group has been like labeled as like the the the, the terrorists, the 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 anti vaxxers mm. the. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the like the, what's the other like the immigrants like like a, where a group is like vilified those topics are touchy and you're either like you know for the people that are again like and then there's so much virtue signaling and like morality and then you're like well if you think this that means i can't actually be like like your your friend right like um like you know you you fall in my eyes i can't like we so one of the Another one of the challenges that's listed in this Wikipedia article is a painful awareness of reality. TCKs have difficulty <laughs> adjusting to cultures where the only culture that is discussed or focused on is itself. So I actually, we, we talked a little, I talked a little bit about that, about America and what you're going through right now, just again, what you're doing is just the painful awareness of reality that like, there's like 
the reality is we should be talking about all of these things very openly and discussing our fears or whatever they are. Um, and in fact, we're doing the exact opposite and we're trying to box them up into little boxes and keep them hidden away in the closet and nobody discussed them. We've all agreed somehow that this is the like right way of doing yeah, things. This is the, the polite no way. Discussion, yeah. The polite way. Yeah, uh -huh. the like polite way. And uh, so we're good to go, everybody. We've Whatever. like next day, so the race has been canceled. Like <laughs> there is no more racism. The war on racism is over. Next yeah. thing, war on drugs still. Yeah. Like it's just like war on um, women. <laughs> the war on women. Like the and the abortion topic is another one too, right? Like it's it's <laughs> look at your face. Like see, like I said that everyone's like, oh shit. Like like you you can't like you can't hang out with people and say, hey, you want to talk the about abortion? Problem, <laughs> you're mentioning topics you don't want to mention to me because I have very like uh opinionated uh views uh, pieces <laughs> on all of these things and i don't mind sharing them well, and, like... but that's what's crazy is that most people i i think most people like do or like i think a lot of people do but when you create an environment where people can't sort of candidly discuss things right then like 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 especially the ones where you have strong views right then what the fuck are we doing well, it's really funny because when I uh, get into any heated discussion over here, whether that's with politics or with religion, I tell I preface it immediately because this isn't my first rodeo now, verbal rodeo, uh, but I preface it immediately that, listen, we're just two people talking, discussing and debating. I have sat in rooms with Israeli Jews who have called for the extermination of all anyone not them. I have also sat in rooms with Indian Hindus who have said Muslims should all die. You have to accept everyone's worldview, you have to accept whatever they're saying, and you have to tackle it intellectually. So before we do this, I need you to understand I am not emotionally attached to any of these ideas. This is just a discussion, a debate we're doing at the Shisha Cafe. Khalas. In two hours when we get up, the world will still continue and we would not have made any decisions and we're just going to continue to burn so like i preface <laughs> all of my like heavy serious with this five minute preamble that yo not my first rodeo i'm not i'm not emotionally attached to any of my arguments we're just talking that's it it's and how does that work. usually go it still doesn't work it out still doesn't i'm glad no. you asked because uh out of the four times i've mentioned this Two people have walked out like pissed off that uh, we don't agree. Like, and we can't agree to disagree because we're all Pakistan. We're Pakistani. Yeah. If I see you Look again, if I ever see you again, huh? <laughs> I'm not saying hi to you. I'm not yeah, going to yeah. say salam to you ever. That's again. it, man. Yeah, that's oh, it's it. like the shisha. The shisha salam yeah. is over. You're corrupt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you only get one, one, one kiss on the cheek, not two. <laughs> um. When, when did it become so, are we going to, I mean, I, I don't know if we want to place blame or anything, but like <laughs> social media really has, I think it's been, it's social media that's really affected the ability to have any type of debate. Because anytime it's, you post something anywhere and something like that, all of a sudden you get all the trolls in the comments and then they're saying, and they're equating simple basic things and saying, well, you've said this, therefore you're this forever and ever and ever. And you're never, you're a chauvinist and a racist until you die type of thing. And I'm like, well, I mean, people evolve and change, don't they? Like, uh, what really has stopped us from being able to have open debates? Well, it's one thing. Social media is one factor. That's for sure there. The second factor is within that, the influencers within those, like, media have used and knowingly abused their positions. So instead of trying to have an intellectual discussion, they move even further. Uh, they are further entrenched into their character, which has certain positions. Much like the Colbert Report back in the day, yeah, like his first show where he was pretending to be a Republican, the mm -hmm. Amer like many people have taken that very seriously and actually mm -hmm. made businesses out of it. Ben Shapiro, Alex Jones are certain names that come to mind, but there are also people on all sides. 
I assume some of them are good people, but all sides, uh, both sides are equal or whatever. Do you, Charleston, anyone remember Charleston? Fine people, huh? Fine, fine, fine people, people on both sides. They're yeah, fine yeah. people on both yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think the general, the like... Uh, no, but uh, no. listen, I'm I, I'm just going to step out on a limb here. Like, oh my God, I'm going to get in so much shit for this. But, but like... When he says, "Okay, here's the bucket." When he I'm, says, "I'm placing yeah, the bucket yeah. in front of you. Yep, Step yep. into it. Yep, here's yep, the bucket yep. of shit." I'm gonna Just dance now, like slowly but surely. But stomp it's like, it, stomp when, on it like it's freaking grapes. Make some wine. When boy. he says, "When, when, when?" Okay, so when like you know the the not the top villain, when the top villain, DT says that uh, there are fine people on both sides, right? So now, if let's say he it wasn't him. That said it, all right? Let's say it was somebody else that was actually like, let's say Obama said that. There are five people on both sides. And the, and the, and the purpose or the intention was to lower the like heat and to, to like, you know, because there's heat. Let's lower the heat so that we Diffuse can- see, the situation. So we can find some common ground so that we can we can begin a, a conversation, a debate, that, that, like let's, we can start to like, you know, to, 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 to grow as a community, like, right? Lower the heat and stuff. Um, mm. now those would be the terms you would use. Like, look, you guys got good points. You guys got good points, but we live in a world, right? Where we are, um, uh, what's it, this, uh, uh, like where we're trying to destroy our enemy. We do not see the value in our enemy. We don't see the, the need for our enemy. We don't see what our enemy does for us. It creates us. It gives us our identity. We need to have this enemy. Right. Um, uh, there's like, you know, like in Buddhist philosophy, right? Like, you know, the yin yang, like you need mm -hmm. the white so you can see the black. You need the black so you can see the white. If you take away all the black, you're not going to see the white. If you're not going to see white, like you need the contrast in order to have anything, anything to, for, for something to exist. It requires contrast. It requires two sides. <laughs> um, and so with with. Uh, we, I think we live in a world, and, and generally, like this is like they say, it's folly to try to destroy your enemy. It's folly to try to take them out, take them out, because if you lose your enemy, you're in trouble. That's going back to the aliens thing, <laughs> right? Like, if you take everybody out, you need to. Um, and so I think what what the folly is is that when you you don't give any sense of sort of either value, he like we're not in a civilized society where I could like sit debate with you and then leave and be like okay that was the debate that we had we we see things certain things the same we see certain things differently nuance right and I think it's not just social media I actually would take it a level higher I think it's media in general because media in general yeah. and that cycle of like because it, it's totally pointless right like like now the the news me like the news media traditional media like whatever you want to call it uh legacy media that it's really pointless right it does nothing i feel i feel but um uh sort of promote an agenda that makes like that keeps eyeballs watching Right, like that promotes an agenda that keeps eyeball watching for the main thing, but it's to create problems between people instead of trying to find like common ground, instead of trying to find like the truth, let's say, <laughs> instead of trying to like you know hold hold um, power accountable, like the whole reason why you know we have like journalists, right? <laughs> like the four instead of being the fourth estate, uh, they they divide us right like they divide us and they and they promote this types of thing where like could you believe what he said about them oh look they're all like you know like i mean as prime minister our prime minister is a great example of that right they're all they're often misogynist they're often racist like all these things that you're like what are you talking like why are you are you promoting the the division between people oh i know why because you need an enemy you need a scapegoat you need someone to blame for everything that's why you are promoting division because it's a lot easier to control divided people than it is to control united people. It's a lot easier. And, <laughs> and that's my, my crazy rant for the day. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, well, that certainly grinded his gears. Uh, <laughs> well, cause we play into it. Like we all play into no, it. But it's true because I, like, I mean, I blame us. My, I think about uh, when we talk <laughs> like the media aspect thing, it's true because I mean, you watch the big news 
networks from the from the US, obviously we know who they are and, and what their political innings are. But then you have like the spoof news shows like The Daily Show, which Trevor Noah says that he's leaving now. But even still, like they make a joke of things and they're trying to be funny about stuff. But in the end, they're still leaning towards like the liberal side of things when it comes to what they're talking about. And that's the viewership and that's the audience and all that kind of stuff. But there's really nothing out there right now that I can think of where you have a host who's willing to talk about anything and willing to bring on any guests from any viewpoint and actually have discussions about things. I can't think of any show that exists that does that. Well, they, they claim to. They all say that. I know, but, but, <laughs> but I'm not talking about claiming. I'm talking about actually does it. I know one show. <laughs> the only thing is, it's none, no, no, you're asking like one show where there's a host and he brings two very opposing sides of an argument. So like, for example, uh, Marcus Garvey inspired a black mm -hmm. person who wants to go back to Africa and a Klansman from like Alabama, right? Yeah. I know one show. Gary Springer. <laughs> <laughs> the scary part is oh, it's man. kind of a joke but it's also not really like that's yeah. the scary reality of it is it's kind of a joke but it's also like yo um this by the way the media thing you guys are talking about is uh when i said ben shapiro alex jones they are the internet extension of like the Bill O'Reilly era, right? Like that, like Fox News, Bush era, really um, it did a number on American media, which was already sort of going um, in its own direction. And the show you're asking about, Rashid, that used to be by law on TV in America, that if you gave 10 minutes to uh, one view, you had to give 10 minutes to another. Reagan abolished that the media it's some media act, some kind of media act. Mm -hmm. He abolished that, which made it uh, news channels then became not journalist houses, became but partisan. propaganda arms. Propaganda yeah. arms. These yeah. modern uh, legacy media, is that the term succession? Like I think succession uses that as well. Legacy media. Um, these are now just modern day uh, propaganda arms. They're not, and you mentioned Trevor Noah. He did a segment on Imran Khan four or five years ago. Uh, mm. And it's so clearly biased that uh, yeah. the stuff Imran Khan talks about to, about the establishment in America working against him. You can see that with someone like Trevor Noah, who I think is funny. But after that segment, which was so biased, I cannot trust him ever again because I know the real story and you didn't even mention things you completely act like mm -hmm. you didn't like you can talk about oh we're not a real news story but like you took a lot of like you're very liberal right now like you're very yeah, yeah. liberal in you know your what? research and in, in, in the end just go with, with what he's doing just go back to be a stand-up comedian really yeah yeah because like, it, just go back and do it because that that's what you're best at by the sorry way, the that sounds guy, harsh i don't care but like you know what uh he he can handle if, it. If you're going, to, I know it's it's a, he doesn't care what the hell I say. He, he can handle this it. anyway. But I mean, if if I get it, you want to be like this this comedy spoof news show thing. I understand that, but it die after a while. It has a it has a shelf life. There's only so much of that you can do before it, well, again, you become disinteresting. My thing is not even shelf life. As long as you're presenting a holistic 360 independent view, I'm kind of down with you. But the moment I see you, uh, it's the same like with Donald Trump. A lot of their coverage is wholly negative. Yeah. Like there are aspects of him that you guys should and can admire. He is a teetotaler. He has never drunk because his brother was an alcoholic. That's a very like... That's a commendable achievement to learn from someone else's mistake is the hall is the hallmark of a smart person to see that this person has died from this thing. Maybe it's in me genetically. It's a smart trait. He might not be a smart person. Again, can we compartmentalize these things or nuance, mishmash, yeah, allowed yeah. your mafi? Ma oh, no, no, not no, 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 not today. Ma -nu, ma -nu. Not today, not today. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> like, uh, what are you, allowed. is that, are you, are you saying? <gasps> like, like, are you saying? That there are good qualities about that, Donald that, Duck. That Donald Trump has some good qualities? <gasps> 
<laughs> like, uh, yeah. <laughs> one more by the way i'll just throw this out there while we're on it um he's a he is a family man whatever you want to say like from the east we respect family <laughs> you don't see that type the way he upholds and keeps his family next to him we don't really see that with uh it's actually quite Westerners. interesting how that family Honestly, all speaking. these years has managed to stick together Wait, man, I oh, think he's like, man, wait, 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 it's a but, miracle. I, but I think I do think he's going to throw his kids. So like, he's going to throw Eric at least out of the bus. He's going to like blame it all on Eric. <laughs> he's going to be like, <laughs> gonna be... <laughs> Eric's going to walk under the bus, bro. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and he won't even know. He's like, what's this? A boat? <laughs> Why does it have wheels? <laughs> 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 every every political debate needs to end it at with the like all of the guys like like laughing like the guys just like fucking start like, like start making fun of Ted Cruz everybody just start making fun of Ted Cruz <laughs> <laughs> the walking joke poor guy makes fun of himself man I can't really like, oh. yeah okay wait wait I don't, I don't want to get back into politics are we no. done that list are we done that list is there anything else on that uh, that you were reading from um, there is uh there's a couple there's two more one of them's kind of like interesting uh ignorance of home culture tck's third culture kids are often lacking in knowledge about their home nation culture town and or family with current technology leading to globalization of information this is becoming increasingly less of a challenge uh and all of that fair um, enough and there's one more um difficulties with adjusting to adult life the mixture of influences from the various cultures that the individual has lived can create challenges in developing an identity as well as with a sense of belonging feelings of rootlessness and restlessness can make the transition to adulthood a challenging period for tck's yeah and then it's disguised as a travel bug it's like, oh, I just want to travel a lot. I just, I like, I just love learning about new cultures. I just, <laughs> like, yeah, I like smelling new foods. Like, <laughs> right? and, it, and it's just fear. Can, it's fear because can you can't sit your ass down. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I can, like, I can definitely vouch for both of them. There was definitely, uh, in fact, with in terms of ignorance of home culture, for the longest time until Imran Khan came to office, I think I actually was very, not even in denial, but actively rejected my home culture, right? If you see a couple like Pakistani looking people walk the other way, that kind of thing, like legitimately, I think there like, not only was there an ignorance, there was an absolute rejection. Uh, difficulties with adjusting to adult life, um, Look at me. <laughs> the answer is pretty self-evident. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'd say more. I'm more advanced than than you guys for a long time. I was always ahead. I was I was always working. Like I had to get my first job at 15 or 16. But I mean, like, I grew up in Canada. It's what you did. You gonna call it uh, now? See, look, look. This is how they got. They fucked with you. Work and adult life. That's what it is. But you have, I mean, that's that's the way it is. Okay, now define adult. People that work. Wow, they got you, man. They got you. Age. <laughs> because at some like, point, you got to learn how to fend for yourself. So, I mean, how are you going to do that if you don't work? And in our case, if you, you grew up here and and you learn pretty, up, pretty quick in your teen years, you want to pay for your life, got to get a damn job, man. You got to go and work. How conservative of you. Right. <laughs> I'm still adjusting to your background. You went from like go walking into heaven to like a straight black. There's nothing. Oh, I'm sad. As soon as he started talking about the adult world, right? Like it just, yeah, yeah. It just goes Can you see my kitchen oh, now? Everything, <laughs> everything <is>. goes dark. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. I think because the light's coming from the front of it, that it's just messing everything up. Um, no, no, it's cool. it's cool. I think it, it does cool speak to, to to that point, though. What you just said about like adult, like like the the the, the difficulty of becoming adults, um, but then it also like because you got to redefine sort of what it is to be an adult. I, I mean, I think I think like like I I, I like uh, you you know you know that term like they, gotta, they they better pull themselves up from their bootstraps. Everybody can work, and I, I think a lot of people use the like work thing as a as a way to 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 like 
to like, okay, this is going to be crazy. Um, Prove like themselves? People, no, to justify their privilege, right? Because like you say, well, I worked, now you don't work. And so therefore I work and I'm an adult and you don't work. And you may not work for a lot of reasons, right? Like you could not work because of one thing or the other. And I don't necessarily think that like living a dignified life has to be tied to your ability to produce economic products for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the world. Um, now see, that, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but when I'm talking about work, I'm not talking about producing anything for the world. I'm talking about you and being able to pay your bills and learning how to be responsible with that or else you're in some deep crap. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, but then I, there's like, people who readily live their lives and they don't work and somehow they manage to get, I don't know, I mean, but then again, they're not having a great life, are they? You know what I'm more interested in? I'm more interested in the people who live their lives just traveling all over the world and, and like backpacking and they still manage to pay for all their stuff. They pay for their hostels, they pay for their food or whatever it is. And they're getting a really fulfilling life somehow doing that. And uh, it, I, well, you, you I would think, love you to know. be able to do that. You I would love to be able to do that, but it terrifies me at the same time. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, well, mm. Wait. Right. MJ. Well, you're going no. straight, then you turn right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't hey, man. know. Uh, should I talk about, debate, going we're talking about we're, we're talking should I talk about, about going right? <laughs> like, where am I going to go now? How do these people live? <laughs> we're not even at a fork. We're we're at like oh, we're no. like we're at spokes in the road. Which one? Which one goes where? Um, I tend to choose the one that's broken. I guess. <laughs> no, we'll we'll talk we'll, we'll talk about about how these people live fulfilling lives in a moment, um, so okay. that we can close the whatever it is I was yelling about. Um, <laughs> uh, the, Working being the be all and end all of producing. Yeah, yeah, the like the, the, the and, tying and of work, the tying of work to to like, to like the definition, like, you know, to to the thing, right? And and work is also like, generally it's a very classical uh, understanding of what work is, right? Like work isn't like, the, like your work, the thing that you do. Um, it might not, because like your work may not bring a lot of money, right? Like you might be like the kick ass like musician um uh you don't that's your work man that's what you do like that's that's what you do but you can't pay the bills right it's like like it's not it's not paying the bills right like it's it, it isn't because the bills are high <laughs> um uh but yeah that that's generally like yeah yeah imagine talk like work and adult life are a little bit connected yanni if you work at an early age you're probably going to be pulled into adulthood early on and you will be exposed to adults early on but i don't think they're i do agree with wasim where they're not necessarily connected i can show you kids here uh like don't tell me they're adults like they're working they have a full work life like literally they they're not day, adults they, but they definitely mature quicker than other people in the in other parts of the world I see, and that's where I don't necessarily like. We're we're talking about adult life. Work and life are not necessarily interconnected. They one influences the other. Work will influence your life, but there are other uh, aspects of adult life. So, like the sentence was difficulties with adjusting to adult life. The work aspect is one part of it, but like when I met you intellectually speaking you weren't developed you developed in front of me literally as we became as we were friends and we we start we were adjusting to i was always life. ahead of you intellectually let's get real. <laughs> <laughs> he still is ladies and gentlemen i completely see it. he still is um, which is why he's on the show, no doubt. Like, um, <laughs> but I do think again, adult life is what like Wasim is saying. There's a much more general umbrella term with other experiences and things as well. Work is a major part of that. In terms of the backpacker people, um, with them, I think uh, you know where I come from in America. There, there's a saying there, right? Uh, if it's too good to be true. And the, I think uh, like we don't, like we see what they sh show us. We don't see everything that is. So we don't know if they're trust fund babies. We don't know mm -hmm. if Elon Musk, for example, motherfucker's family has like diamond mines and shit in South Africa. Like he's not some the immigrant story that he's been portrayed to be. He's not that. He's worked hard. There's no doubt. He's done his own softwares. There's no doubt. But he is very clearly a child of privilege that we don't hear about. Anderson I'm, I'm, Cooper, I'm, um, I'm still convinced that Musk is an alien, but whatever. Anderson Cooper, yes. 
Anderson Cooper and Tucker Carlson also probably are aliens. And they are also like from very wealthy, wealthy. Gloria mm-hmm. Vanderbilt is Anderson Cooper's mom. And Tucker Carlson is from the Tyson Food multinational, which is like top for Fortune 500. I'm just saying, and that extends usually, I've noticed the trend where these backpacker people, they do have funds and stuff that we don't necessarily know about. So like, and that's what's supporting them, not necessarily this lifestyle. Yeah, but I've met a few people along the way who don't come from a silver spoon and they adapted that, adopted that, that lifestyle. And, and uh, for kudos, that, to Wasim, them. kudos to them. For that, Wasim has experience in this. He was one of those dudes. He can like tell us what's up. How do you do it? Yeah, man, there's both sides to it, man. Like, like what, one of the <laughs> things, what, like, okay. There's lots of ways that somebody can do it, but a big part, like the way to do it is to like jump, right? You got to jump. Because if it scares you, like, and you don't know how it's to do it exactly, the, it's it's experience, right? Like jump, like, it, like it'll enrich you. Um, mm-hmm. Some people, like I met people that, like, like barter is a big move. So like they would just barter, like, like I got a skill and you got a hotel. Like I, I, I'm, I, I have a drone and you have a hotel. How about I take pictures? Like you got a shitty ass room that nobody uses and nobody wants. Yeah. That, I got a room over there. Okay, sweet. I can, I stay there in that room and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll drone up the place for you and get some nice pictures. <laughs> I'll set up your email. Like, you know, that like a lot of times mm-hmm. people, uh, I, like I've met people that have been able to get pretty far and save, save, like save money, but like accommodate themselves, um, and, and live, uh, you know, and also keeping your needs simple. Right. Like, like, you know, like you, like you keep, you keep some, some people are able to keep their needs simple. Some other people like, you know, I, I have like a 5 million followers, man. I can cover this marketing. I can cover this place for you um, and get it out there for you. And if, would you, you know, give me a room like, and so now they're, you're, they're, now you're selling your soul as an influencer. Well, I mean, you're, you're, you're uh, capitalizing on uh, your mm. strengths <laughs> and, and the things that you have and you're exchanging with other people. So a lot of people do that. Um, uh, and you kind of, like, I think a big part of it is like, you kind of suspend because generally like with, with sort of traditional work, it's, 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 it's believed to be predictable. So it's very like predictable. I know how much I'm getting paid every month. I know how much is going into the account. Like I, I like, the, I know what time I have to be there. I know what time I leave. I'm like, I know all these like very predictable things, which can, can feel very safe. Um, uh, and with this type of lifestyle, it's uh, like, you know, it's far from predictable. Uh, you, it's harder to predict and you, it's more like kind of reactive. You have to react, I think a bit more, um, which was probably in line with, with the actual, like with the, with the, with the, the, the characteristic on the, on that list. Right. So yeah. it's, it's not, it's, it's definitely, and it has its pros and cons, right? Like, like predictability is also helpful. Like, like you can't just have a totally unpredictable life entirely, entirely, entirely that I imagine can get very exhausting. Um, and you kind of want something to hold something to ground you something to like, okay, at least my schedule's clear. Right. And I think the older I get and the more of an adult I become, if I am becoming an adult, uh, the more adult I become, the more I appreciate these types of like sort of habits and schedules that exist on on my terms, on my time, uh, so that like so that there is grounding, and that that actually affords me the ability to be more creative and sort of wild on in other things. Even though this is not true, like I don't feel wild at all, um, but like it, it it affords it gives me the grounding from which to like you know uh, leap. From which to leap, um, to leap forward and to 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 jump into um, the future, so, you know? Yeah, so basically, like, um, I don't know if this is an actual phrase that I just coined or not, but I would say now adult life and work has now become adaptive because now you have the opportunity to have very independent type of work. So we talk about influencers on Instagram, for example. Like, I just passed one uh, two days ago when I was in Saskatoon walking along the river. It's really nice, actually. And uh, clearly this girl, she was, she's like in her, you know, workout outfit, whatever it is, but she was clearly doing a video for her influencing Instagram um, account. And that's become common, right? I mean, now it's, we, we've, you wanted, you were saying, talking about traditional work, regular nine to five monotony or working at Walmart or whatever it is. And like you have your set schedule, but now a lot of people, 
um, especially with COVID. I think that made things even explode even more when it came to people doing their own independent work and doing their videos and stuff and hoping that they get enough followers to get monetized on places like Instagram or TikTok or something like that. Um, so I guess I, you, the discussion now turns to what adult life has become based on the work that's available. So yeah, you can be an influencer, get monetized, um, and it's going to pay your bills. And all you're really doing is you're just making videos and enough people watch it. You're paying your bills. Bah, all you, that's cynical. All you're really doing. You're providing value, man. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, <laughs> physically speaking, you're doing something. You're still doing like some, something yeah, some people, like to sometimes, get paid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Either way, you have to do something to get paid, to pay for what you need. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Money. <laughs> It's all about money, man. <laughs> so there's two different um, things here at play that you're mentioning, I think, Rashid. One is mm -hmm. third culture kids who are outside of their home element, let's say, and then millennials. Because the gig economy is sort of started from millennials onwards. So mm. if you add the third culture part and the millennial part together, mm -hmm. you get this digital nomad which we mentioned nomad like at the beginning of the show, you now get that digital nomad where, and I'm one of those people, my work is not traditional. It's not in an office. Um, I still deliver it on time. I'm still forced to deadlines and stuff, uh, you know, uh, but you also sort of have your time to record uh, third culture conversations or football conversations or whatever. One big yeah. example of that is uh, that dude, Naz Daly. Yeah, absolutely. He's, a, he's like the epitome of what you just said. He gets shit on a lot for a lot of stuff that he does and says, especially when it comes to Israel-Palestine. But um, he, I think, man, he, he's, he's like a quintessential example of that. But, you know, man, if you, like the thing is, if you're going to ever if you're going to find any success or if any success is going to find you, it comes with getting shit on. Mm -hmm. Like success doesn't to. come have, without someone to. shitting on it, on you or on it or like, well, that's, like there's that's no... the way interest gets garnered based on what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. The more shit, the better. Right. Like, like the it's, it, it provides the contrast. Not just uh, get used to getting shitted on. And um, the first time you do something, get used to like people just not even understanding. They're not even mm. shitting on it. They just don't like, a lot of like Americans forget like Jimi Hendrix had to move to England to get hurt. Like they didn't understand his sound at all in America. He had to move to London, play a couple of clubs there. That's where Eric Clapton and all the musicians, uh, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, all of those people were like, holy shit, this dude can play. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a number of other examples. Uh, James Baldwin moved to, I think, Algeria or France. Sorry, France and Algeria at France, some point. Yeah. Um, and that's what sort of really yeah, kicked him into overdrive culturally or like in professional terms, that, that's what kicked him into overdrive. Um, so sometimes uh, when you're doing something new, don't expect them to understand the first time either. Yeah, yeah. And if they do, you're not doing it new enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, if yeah, they get it, if you get it, man, you gotta go a bit further, man. I think, I think, you think you could still marinate that shit. <laughs> I guess for, for long, I think for longevity, and that's in that type of sense, for longevity, the more against the grain you are, the better. Uh, yeah, man. I think the more you get people talking, like that's the whole influencer. Like that's the thing, right? Like it's the currency is how many people, like like or hate you but like know you care like like you know like that's the currency social it's, it's fucking social media it's social media it's the currency of it mm -hmm. like and then a, a lot of people play that and like say outlandish shit in order to just get that like to get the following and like like and and then it's up to you to be like man this guy's just being outland outlandish and that's one of the modern challenges that's not listed on this list is actually what you just stumbled on. Third culture kids in the in the age of bombast were much more nuanced and tied to reality. So we can often our message or even our messaging both 
can come off very boring because we're not outlandish and because we're not ready to say all Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers. And I assume some of them are good people because some of us have actually been to Mexico or dealt with Mexicans and we know they're human beings. Some are good, some are bad. That's it. Right. And yeah. like in the age of bombast, that becomes that much harder to be sober. Yeah. Yeah. To be, yeah, 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 yeah. Drunkenness is that much harder to be sober. That's uh, I think that's a great, uh, that's a great closing. Man. That's a great closing. Uh, <laughs> like, like we went through the material, and then, and then we, we added our own little. Isn't that like every like research paper is that like you go through all the material, then you add a little line at the end. You're like, oh, that one's, that's what I did. <laughs> my, it, my, 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 uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> my contribution is is coining adaptive work. <laughs> okay. I'm so worried you were gonna steer like left this time, <laughs> like like open up a new topic. <laughs> no, no, adaptive uh, work. Remember that. Uh, if I ever see that in a paper, I'm gonna claim copyright infringement. Infringement. Okay. Good times, y'all. See you next week. Peace. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>